my guest has got the chutzpah, that's a Jewish word for nerve, to say this is the end of the church as we know it. Now, Mark Lawson, there was a day that you loved drugs and you had a cousin coming over to sell drugs. Tell me about that day. Well, that's when I got, uh, gave my life to the Lord. I came over to do a drug deal and um, he prayed for us and he left our house about midnight and my wife and I went into our uh, bedroom to go to sleep and we just felt so cleansed, so different. And we remember laying on the bed there and holding hands and praying. And we invited, we actually said, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to us. And we knew nothing about what that meant, except the person that, that shared faith with us explained some of that. And as we prayed that and held each other's hands, we really, the power of God uh, was just flooded the room, the glory of God. We started shaking. We felt like the bed was shaking. We felt like a train was going right next to our window. Now, now you may not be able to answer this, but uh, I've had experiences like this. I've seen a lot of people. Yes, sir. What is God doing to the person? Any idea? Well, we felt like the, the best way to describe it is we were changed from the inside out. Uh, we felt like somebody took a, a toothbrush with Comet and just scrubbed us all inside. And, and we felt the glory of God, the light of God, the acceptance of God. And so the power, that whole experience was like our foundation. And so the power of God and the miraculous and the supernatural has drawn us and we've been, that's been part of our life ever now, since. That's been normal for you. It's really. been normal for us from the get go. I mean, when you read the Bible, that's normal. Yes. When you have experiences in most churches in the world, that's abnormal. Mm, unfortunately. I, I've had abnormal, I've had normal. Right. I like normal a yes. lot better. Now, you had a series of dreams and visions. Mm -hmm. um, what was God showing you from this series? Uh, this was a few years back, but I had three dreams in a row. I had a vision and three dreams to confirm it. And during these, these episodes, uh, the Lord was showing me that the church was about to go through a major uh, shakedown, meltdown, and then a rebuilding. And um, the, the first vision was like a, a skyline, a skyscape. And, uh, but the series of dreams, were, were they kept saying the same thing, that the church had, nobody was taking responsibility. Uh, in the church. Everybody's responsibility to win the lost and things like this were nobody's. And that there had to be a major shift from a top-down, uh, pastor-centric uh, uh, model to more of a biblical model where we have the apostles and the saints uh, doing all that, all that stuff. So in other words, rather than being just a uh, spectator, Yes. Which is what most people do. They yeah. look in their synagogue, their church, the mosque, they look at the back of someone's head. They become participants. Of course, you can't become a participant unless you're a member of the family, the family of God. And there's no other name given unto men in which we must be saved but the name of Jesus. Mark, you have had so many amazing experiences, but tell me what... God has shown you or you feel the church is going to look like in the future? Well, I think it's going to be glorious. I think this is the greatest time to be alive, honestly. And I've been in ministry now for 30 years, and, but I feel like I'm just getting started because I feel like we're about, to, we're about to enter an age of great glory for the church where the church will be in, uh, the nations will, will be in awe of her. And it's a wonderful time to be here. Well, at your church, you have some unusual decor on the walls. Explain that. Right. Well, um, as you walk in our church to the left, we have an entire wall dedicated to wheelchairs, braces, neck braces, uh, uh, casts, those strap-on casts. Uh, we have two hearing aids. We have uh, uh, diabetic equipment, syringes, uh, the whole diabetic pack, people getting healed of diabetes and things like this. And we display it for the, so people can see that uh, God's alive and we've got proof. And, and what I love about you is he doesn't wait for people to come into his church. He goes out. Explain. 
Well, uh, a few years ago, we realized if we're going to, this vision that I had about the church being looking different, uh, we realized all through the Bible, Jesus was on his way to things. He was going somewhere. He was, and most of his miracles happened, it says, and on the way. Uh, this or that happened. And so uh, we realized that we had to be on the way and go out to them. They're not going to come to us. And that you don't, you don't catch fish uh, on land. You have to go into the deep. You have to step out. And so we started intentionally doing that. And, and, and you go to uh, football games. You go to department stores. Right. Uh, right. You go into some of the worst areas in your city. Yeah, we go uh, into the hood. We go into these uh, trailer parks. We go mm -hmm. into... Uh, old neighborhoods, we go into where the poor are and the needy are, and we also, uh, we also have what we call, uh, we have these times where people go out and they just go into malls and spread out in twos and look for people that are sick, wheelchairs, crutches, etc., to pray for them and heal them, get them healed. Now, you have an aggressiveness, you have a, 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 a faith that you believe when you pray for people they're going to be healed, and it's contagious. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, let, listen, it's so highly contagious, I believe that you're going to pick up this disease. It's called being normal. Get ready to be normal. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Mark Lawson, and Mark has such bold faith that I believe in this faith for the miraculous. I believe as you listen to us, it's going to be contagious. I also believe many of you are going to be, in fact, right now, someone's spine was just healed, mm -hmm. a back was just healed. Are you hearing anything, Mark? Mm -hmm. there's, there's some people with some uh, cancer, and they feel like that it's inoperable, pancreatic cancer, I think it is. And uh, I just want them to know that the Lord's healing them right now. The Lord wants to heal cancer. He's good. And part of the reason we do this is to prove or to display the goodness of God. Uh, can you tell me one person you've prayed for that had cancer that God healed? It was a Friday. I got a call from a developer friend of mine. Uh, he said, "My uh, a man I've known for 20 years, his name is Joe, his brother-in-law uh, has his entire uh, one of his lungs is completely covered with a tumor. They discovered it right before Christmas. And this is around January, February uh, of, I don't know if it was this year or next, last year. He calls me and says, it's a tragic situation. Can you get somebody, one of your teams to go pray for him? Um, and so I prayed about it. I went and looked on their, uh, their life pages on the web and on the internet. And I just looked at this man, 45 years old, five daughters, beautiful wife, his own business been healthy every day of his life and now he's got stricken with stage four cancer and they'd he'd even gone to the Houston uh, done, done all the stuff he could do in Atlanta he'd done all the stuff he could do in Columbia and Atlanta and then they sent him to Houston and they just said go home and spend time with your family because it was they couldn't operate it was so aggressive um, I felt so so burdened by that like Jesus he felt that compassion I think that's a big key and I was talking to my wife about it and she said why don't you go this was a Saturday, uh, like noon. She said, why don't you go right now? And I go, but it's a, it's a four hour drive. And so I got through all that and decided to go, called Joe and said, Joe, do you want to go right now and pray for your brother-in-law? I said, yes. In two hours, we were on the road. We got there, we prayed for him for an hour. We uh, spoke healing and declare that he's healed in Jesus' name, just like the book of Acts, just like the, the disciples did. They didn't pray for the sick, they healed the sick. So we did that for about an hour. They're crying, they're weeping. Uh, they're so glad we just, a total stranger. I'd never met this man in my life. In fact, I'd never met the man that drove me till we went over there and we had prayer times in the car. Uh, that was on Saturday. By Wednesday, the man felt so good. He started eating immediately, but, but he felt so good. Wednesday, he woke up and said, I'm going to go back to work. He hadn't been to work in six weeks, I think. And he hadn't eaten. He was losing three to five pounds a week. And he was just thin. Um, he, he went and played nine holes of golf and went back to work that day. Friday he went in, and uh, that Friday, which is six days after we prayed, and that Friday they said, all your vital signs are perfect. They haven't been this way for six weeks. 
and you've gained eight pounds. I didn't hear anything else, Sid, and then two and a half weeks later, I was just thinking about it, I think, what happened to that guy? And I get an email, and I get a phone call. You're, they said, Mark, you're not going to believe it. I said, I do believe it. Is this the guy that we went to pray for? They go, yes. He went into the doctor, did his MRI, did all the scans, did all the x-rays. They can't find anything. They can't find a tumor. They can't find anything. It's gone. You know, uh, something that I've, I've gotten to know Mark a little bit, something that gets him even more excited than that is equipping people to do the same thing he can do. And what I love is, tell me about that person that goes into uh, uh, areas of poverty, need, knocks on doors, and starts congregations in the homes. Well, we started doing this about a year or two ago. We realized we need to go to where they are and do what Jesus did when he went into a village. He sent people in twos into a village. He said, if there's a man of peace there, you stay. So we'd go to a home, and I remember we've got a young man named Nathan in our church. Uh, he went to this new neighborhood in Marietta, uh, very poor, very needy, a lot of gangs, a lot of drugs. Went in there, got this woman and her son and her daughter all uh, healed. The woman had diabetes, I believe, had a lot of drugs, had a lot of problems. They got healed in one visit. They came back the next week. The son got healed. The daughter got saved. The whole family comes back to the Lord. Now we, we, we started meeting. He started going back and meeting and having a house church. Within a few weeks, they have 18 people coming to this house church in the lady's home in the hood. And uh, now there's two house churches in that neighborhood in less than a year. Uh, but you've had cr so many creative miracles. Like, uh, tell me about the person without an eardrum. We trained some people in Winston-Salem, and uh, we took them out with us one afternoon. And they went out with us, Sid, and uh, we, just, we just showed them how to do it. We didn't say, it wasn't tell you, it was show you. We showed them, and they kept running with it and kept going back to the neighborhood we went to that first Saturday. They go to this neighborhood. This is, this is we got them started a few months ago, maybe even six months ago. I just got an a email uh, and a phone call the other day that this man that had no eardrum, uh, they prayed for him. He immediately got his hearing back. They did all the kind of hearing tests, you know, snapping the fingers right. and all that stuff. And he hadn't been able to hear anything. He had bad hearing in one ear, no hearing in that ear, uh, because he had no eardrum. And by the time they'd left, he was hearing perfectly in that ear. They went back a week later. Uh, it's even better. And again, these people aren't going to the doctor all the time, so we're not sure if he got it verified with a test, a hearing test. Uh, but I Listen, believe he you, did get a hearing test. You can test. tell when someone's deaf and then they can hear. It, yeah, it, you deaf, don't have to be a rocket. The deaf hear, <laughs> the blind see. Okay. In the next segment, when we come back, there are, and I'm hearing the word head. Anything you need in the head area, mm -hmm. the neck up, you're going to be healed mm -hmm. in Yeshua. In That's name. Hebrew for Jesus. Yeah. In, in Yeshua's, Yeshua's name. name. We'll be right back after this word, and Mark and I are going to listen to God and be obedient, and you're going to have an action. In other words, if I say your neck's healed, move your head, you'll see the pain is gone. That's what I mean by an action. Don't go away. I'll be right back after these words. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Mark Lawson, and Mark told me something during our break. We had a visitor. We had a whole slew of visitors. What did you tell me, Mark? Well, when you were, when you were just pre, uh, praying for that person and said you felt something about the head, I saw an angel. Uh, in my spirit, not in the natural, but I saw, I saw this angel and I felt like that angel is going to that house of that person with a problem in their head. And whoever that is, I don't know who it is, but, but the Lord wants to heal that. It may be brain, it may be brain cancer uh, or some kind of disease, or it could have something to do with your hearing. Uh, I'm not really sure. Well, you you well, saw it. Oh, well, well, what I absolutely believe is what I heard. I heard head. That means, and, and from neck up, that means anything. Yeah. that is wrong with you. Uh, he hearing, yeah. eyesight, uh, headaches, right. migraines, allergies, uh, colds, uh, any, anything, anything that is going on from the neck up 
it is yours in Jesus' name. And that mm -hmm. was a healing angel that was mm -hmm. released. Mark, tell me about uh, the time that you uh, and your team went to Goodwill. Well, actually, this was just, uh, it was my day off. I was going there with my wife to, she wanted to shop stuff for our grandkids. We have seven grandkids. And she was, wanted to get some stuff at this particularly really nicely, uh, nice Goodwill that has a lot of nice merchandise. And it was pretty empty. And there was a man that walked in with a neck brace from, from here all the way down to here. And it, mm -hmm. it had these long things that went down his back. And, his, and so he was very stiff and he couldn't move. His neck was like in this position. He was waddling almost like a robot. And he walks in, he, he walks in with this couple. I imagine they were his parents. And uh, I'm standing with my wife. I walk him walk, walk by. I watch him walk by, and I felt like the Holy Spirit said, uh, "You want to have some fun, Mark? You want to have some fun? Uh, uh, check this out." And I looked, and I thought, "Oh boy, okay," uh, because I know that God is in me, and He wants mm -hmm. to He wants to break out of all of us, Sid, and heal the lost, and and He wants to heal people and and bless them and break that depression and remove that. So. I kind of fought it. I talked to my wife about it. She said, oh boy, okay, we just do what you're going to do. And I went over to him and there's uh, just a few uh, little Hispanic ladies shopping for stuff next to them. And um, it was a mess because I walk over to him and I said, sir, how you doing? My name is Mark and you don't know me, but I felt like the Lord, uh, well, do you mind me asking you what's going on with your neck? And he said, I don't mind. I had an auto accident. Uh, I, I trashed three of my vertebrae, hmm. uh, the discs. Uh, I've had surgery. I'm in great pain right now. I said, from what degree of pain? From zero to uh, 10, and uh, 10 being the worst. I think he said eight or nine. It was bad. Uh, maybe 11. It was really bad. He was in a lot of pain. And, and I said, would you mind if I pray for you? Uh, I said, we've seen a number of people healed. And I, he said, it's fine. And then his parents kind of came over and they wanted to chime in. And so I said, well, let me pray. And I said, be healed in Jesus' name. That's all I said. And I said, I release the fire of God on you. And immediately his face got flush, red. And I said, do you feel, sir, do you feel anything different than when we started? And uh, when I prayed, and he said, do I? I said, do you feel that pain? Is that pain still there? And he said, no. Uh, actually, I don't feel any pain, I, but I feel really, really hot. I'm on fire. And I said, okay, well, can I pray again? And so I, I said, fire of God, finish the healing, heal him completely, and no pain in Jesus' name. And I said, now what do you feel? And he said, uh, I'm just hot. And I said, well, uh, you got this brace on there, that could be it. And he goes, I got to take it off. So he took the brace off, Sid, right in front of me, dropped it to the floor in goodwill. I said, what do you feel? He goes, I feel incredible heat in his neck. All his head was like beet red. And uh, I said, so can you do something you couldn't do before, like you were just saying? And he said, well, uh, I couldn't do this before. I couldn't do that before. He started moving his head like that. And then he started moving his head around like this. And he goes, I couldn't do that before either. I said, so are you healed? Is there any pain? He goes, I have no pain and I'm healed. And he's moving his head around. I, I said, could you walk? He said, not without pain. I said, walk. And he just took off running, walking all over the store. Then his mother, the minute he walked away, she walked up to me and she goes, do me next. <laughs> Were other people watching? Well, there was this group of Hispanic ladies got in line after this lady. I prayed got for Got in line? Got in line. This in lady the, I prayed for, store. she goes, do me next. She had lupus. I said, what is your deal? She said, lupus. And I said, be healed in Jesus name. She fell down to the floor. And then these Hispanic ladies came up and I didn't know how to s speak to them. So I said, uh, mucho fuego, which I think means more fire. <laughs> uh, and they all were swooning and you could see the fire of God come on them and touch them. Well, you know, as you're talking about the fire of God, my face is yes, feeling fire. I see fire. it right now. Uh, uh, and, I feel it. And, uh, and I believe if you start praying for the fire of God's healing to come on people. Let's do it. And you start and I'll finish. Okay. Well, I do. I pray. If you're watching this broadcast and uh, you need a touch from God and you need uh, to experience the goodness of God through his healing. Lord, I just release the fire of God to the people of God and to those that don't even know. Maybe you're just watching this uh, wherever you are. Uh, you're just watching this sitting at home. The Lord wants to reveal his goodness to you. And so I just release the fire of God 
to you right now to bring healing and light and life and to break depression. There are people fighting depression. They're sitting there addicted to drugs and, and alcohol and fighting, trying to cover up the pain. And the Lord's healing them right now. He's healing your broken heart. In fact, said I especially feel there are those that have a broken heart, a wounded spirit. And the Bible says a wounded spirit, who can bear? And many times we found this wounded spirit is opens the door for all kind of sickness. So in Jesus' name, I release healing for the wounded spirit spirit. And there are some of you, they're going to feel immediate change in Jesus' name right now. You're going to feel it. I'm telling you, I am feeling the fire of Me God. Too. Mark, Me too. Can, can you, you feel that? Well, I believe that you can feel that too. And I believe when you feel the fire of God, His presence is there because He's so close. That's why you feel that fire. He is close. Mm. And there are angels coming from the throne of God right now. And, and, and they keep telling me that someone's back has just been yes. healed. So just as Mark yes. has said, do exactly yes. what that man did with the neck brace. Just bend, stand mm -hmm. up and yeah. bend over. And then there's someone whose arm if you will just bend your arm like this, you'll see that the pain is all gone. Uh, there's someone whose Great. neck is healed. Are you hearing anything more, Mark? Right, yeah, and the, the cancer. There's somebody fighting cancer, and you feel like cancer is a death sentence. I want to tell you, cancer is not a death sentence, because the it's not over till the Lord says it's over. And cancer is not a death sentence. We've seen so many healed of cancer. We prayed for three people in the last week that have been touched and we we've got verification on one of them that they've been healed of cancer but we we are hitting this and the more you hit it uh, and pray for that we've seen more success so whoever's got some kind of leukemia I think and you just think you're, you're facing a, you know a bone marrow transplant and all that in Jesus name let the fire of God come over you and I just pray that they'll be able to actually go in and see that when you get those tests your T count will be your T cell count will be perfect uh, in Jesus name and I'm going to release more of that fire. Is that okay? Is that what you want? I'm going to join hands with Mark right now. And right. I say, fire. Fire of God. Fire. Yes. Fire. Fire. Yes. Healing. Oh, someone's eye is being healed yes. right now. In fact, I tell you, it's your left eye is being healed. And remember, any type of migraine, any type of headache, mm. it is gone in yes, Jesus' name. Yes. And there's so many people whose backs are being healed. More fire, more fire, more fire, more, more, more. Mark. Pray fire. Yeah, I, I really feel like there's also somebody with a spine problem. You've got de degenerative, they have degenerative discs. And Lord is like touching those discs right now in Jesus' name. We release healing for degenerative discs. In fact, I see somebody in one of those motorized wheelchairs and you've become even dependent on the wheelchair. In fact, you thought it was a testimony of God that you could uh, uh, get that. And the Lord's healing you. He wants to get you out of that in Jesus' name. Make Jesus your Lord. I mean, come on, it's fun. It really is. 